Yay! <clears throat> I, I just captured a wild bull pit on, on Pokemon Go. Huzzah! Everything is right in the world. The wild bull pit has been captured. Good morning! Uh, it is a good morning. Crisp, cool, clean. <clears throat> Newcastle kicks off in just over an hour. I won't look at the lineups until after I'm done with Bible study. I'm debating whether I'm going to watch it here or whether I'm going to go home and sit in my uh, recliner and watch it on the TV there. Either way, it'll be fun. Um, I hope you have a good day, a good weekend, and I hope you stay warm wherever you're at. We're going to do two days worth of readings today to, to catch up in John since we're going through the Gospel. and I really like the Gospel of John. But we'll, uh, and then we'll also move on to the Sixth Commandment. So... Uh, let's open up with our uh, order of service, page 295 in your hymnal, or page 043 in the Treasury of Daily Prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalmody for today is Psalm 77, Selected Verses. <clears throat> I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying, my soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. Will the Lord spurn me forever, and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? <clears throat> Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. You with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading will be from uh, John chapter 1. <clears throat> and this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. <clears throat> now they've been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know even he who comes after me. The strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptized with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and I have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. 
Jesus turned and saw them following, and they said to him, and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus, and Jesus looked at him and said, So you are Simon, the son of John, and you shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the things that is striking is the, the, uh, the repeated refrain of come and see, come and see, and not knowing until folks see. Even John, the Baptist, says, yeah, I didn't know him until I saw this. Well, wait a second, didn't John jump in his, the, his, his mother's womb? Yeah, he wasn't born yet. And uh, let me ask you, how many things do you remember from, oh, before you were born? We have no idea how much uh, Mary and Elizabeth interacted after birth and stuff like that. And it might have been a long time since they had seen his cousin. Doesn't necessarily mean first cousin, it's, it's kinfolk. And what we get from John is that he had a, a, a slightly odd past. He, uh, <clears throat> by all accounts, most people think that he ended up becoming a, an Essene, which was a, a group of people who lived out on the, uh, the peripheries, out by the wilderness. So he wasn't up hanging out in Nazareth. He lived closer to the temple and then east out in the wilderness. Jesus lived up north in Galilee, a good hundred miles away. So it, it's... It's one where they probably didn't interact a ton. And then Jesus shows up, and John sees the Spirit. And then John points out, look, behold, behold, see, edu, use your eyes and see this guy. He's the Lamb of God. And then what's the refrain over and over? Come and see, come and see, come and see. Often we talk about faith comes by hearing. But we can also use that idea of, of seeing, of, of, of viewing. And one of the things to bring up is, is if you are uncomfortable talking, if you cannot uh, speak like Aaron, if you cannot preach like Paul, come and see. Bring people, invite people. There, there's constant invita invitation to see Jesus. To, to, to hear his word, to listen to him. And so I, I encourage you, go ahead and invite people to church. Yeah, even in the midst of a pandemic, we've got space. We're, we're spread out. It, it's okay. So <clears throat> just that for a, a thought for the day. And uh, we'll, we'll move on and do our uh, catechism lesson today which deals with things that we might not want to uh, come and see. So, today we have the Sixth Commandment. What is the Sixth Commandment? You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do, and husband and wife love and honor each other. Do 
there's not much left from before the fall. But marriage is from before the fall. Um, in fact, marriage is older than government. It's older than the, the church as a, an institution. Marriage is the oldest human estate. And it is to be prized and valued, not only for husband and wife to honor and cherish each other, but also for us to recognize that marriage itself, that, that man and wife is a wonderful, life-creating establishment. An establishment that creates life, that betters life, that, that honors existence. And we don't honor marriage like we should. And I, I'm not talking with politics or anything like that. I mean, just culturally, we, how do I want to put this? We're much more interested in sex and sexuality and sexualizing and, and the use of body for pleasure when that's just a, a fragment of what the fullness of marriage is to be. Uh, in our wedding service, um, it points out that there are, are three purposes for, for marriage, for, for uh, the mutual support and companionship, so a, a mutual support, it's better to be two than one. That there will be uh, possibly children, that's the second purpose, so procreation. The third is just mutual enjoyment and pleasure. And, and we, we denigrate the first two. Because those actually involve real people. If I'm supporting someone, if I'm living with, if I'm establishing a household with someone, I'm dealing with a real person. If, if there's procreation, I have to deal with real people. If it's just pleasure, I can be utterly selfish and just think about myself and treat them as the other person as disposable. I can consume them. They're in need. And, and just as so many things in our society have become disposable and used and throw away, or, oh, use and recycle, which isn't really throwing it away, even though it gets dumped in the ocean. But... No, we, we, we treat so many things as disposable. Lo that husband and wife love and honor each other. To honor is to acknowledge that there is a value. If you treat something as disposable, there is no value. Um, if I use paper plates, I'll use them once and toss them away because they're not that valuable. They might be more expensive than I'd like, but they're really not that, that valuable. I don't do that with Grandma's China. A and this is the, the thing. We, we have done much to detach value from spouses, value from future spouses, value from other people, value from children. And rather, we almost look at people just in terms of their utility and short-term utility at that. And so the, the Sixth Commandment isn't just oh, bad stuff with sex. But, but it deals with things that are much larger. So if you are married, I encourage you to love and honor your spouse. If you are single, I encourage you to prepare to love and honor someone if you are given that task and to help others love and honor people. Because love and honor, short supply in this world today. Um, why? Why put the time and effort in actually loving and honor, honoring? You can just go get something new that scratches your itch of the day. So, And yet, what is the image that, that Jesus gives of Christ and the church? Hmm. He is the groom, the church is the bride, and what does he do? Loves and honor. Washes her in baptism to present herself to him without a spot or blemish. Increases her honor. It's a good model a good thing to shoot for. Forgive us for when we fall flat. All right. With that being said, let us confess the creed, and then we'll go for some prayers, and then we'll uh, be on our way. Uh, Bible study will be on Revelation at 4 p.m. this afternoon, and uh, then church, and then tomorrow morning church at 8.30,
then Exodus Bible Study. Hopefully we'll have more people here than last week in the snow. And um, yeah, so let's confess the creed and then we'll carry on. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, <clears throat> and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this weekend. We ask that you would grant your people rest, that they would be refreshed by the hearing of your word and receiving of your supper. Bless those who are unable to attend church. Grant them patience and endurance, and restore them quickly to the community of your believers. Heavenly Father, be with those who are ill, those who are suffering, uh, grant them peace, grant them endurance, grant them strength, and if there's your will, speedily restore them to health. Be with the doctors and nurses who tend to them. Be with the physical therapists who guide treatment plans and recovery. Uh, fill them with, with endurance that they might continue to show love to the people you have placed into their lives. Heavenly Father, bless all pastors and uh, church workers as they prepare for services this weekend. Grant that they would so proclaim your word and show and and show people Jesus that they would see and believe. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Note on the pulpit, a little plaque that Pastor Royer helped put up and often many other churches. A little line from John that we might get later on, or we might not get that far because we'll shift readings when we hit Ash Wednesday. Sir, we would see Jesus. Great thing to remember. All right, prayers of the day. Almighty God, by your grace, the apostle Andrew obeyed the call of your son to be a disciple. Grant us also to follow the same Lord Jesus Christ in heart and life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Concluding prayers. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and ever evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. All right, I'm going to go get ready to watch Newcastle and then eat, eat some brisket that I put in the oven last night at around 7 o'clock at around 200 degrees and it's slow cooked all night. Um, that's the key. Good rub, slow cook the brisket, comes up perfectly fine in the oven. Um, at some point when, when things clear up with COVID, uh, we'll, we'll have to do a... a uh, watch a, a Newcastle match on the big screen. Might not be this this year, or this season, because the season ends in May. We'll, we'll see, maybe by beginning of May we could. But hopefully by kickoff in, in August, we could pull that off, so. And maybe I can convert some of the locals here to, to the love of, of English soccer, British football, and uh, Newcastle, so. All right, or maybe not, but it'll be fun. There could be popcorn. All right, have a good one, everybody.
by. Come and see. Jesus, not the soccer. <laughs>